Hey y'all, it's Nick from Undefeated Productions, and welcome back to The 3-2 Pitch, our podcast where me and Drew are going out and talking about all things baseball. This week we're going out and going to be talking about the MLB playoffs. We just had the season conclude yesterday. It's currently Monday. I'm going to try to get this out to you tonight. If not, you're seeing this Tuesday morning before the playoffs begin. And Drew, how are you doing today? How, 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 how are things looking for the playoffs? I'm doing great. You know, it's uh, my team. They fell flat as they, as you know, I mean, I didn't expect the giants to do anything, but uh, for them to lose the last three games of the year against a team that had already clinched and they didn't even have to really, that didn't have anything to play for. And the Padres and the giants still stunk it up. They got walked off on Friday night on their own ballpark. One of the most, uh, one of the oddest uh, moments you'll ever see in, in baseball, but I guess this whole year has been odd. Um, but excited to talk about the uh, these eight series that we have coming up this week. What a week it's going to be for uh, baseball fans. Yeah, for sure. So this, this postseason format is a lot different this year. Of course, we have expanded. So 16 teams enter. We have eight different series of three games apiece, four in the National League, four in the American League. So that's what we're going to talk about. Again, before we get started, hit that like button, subscribe. Let me know what y'all think about the podcast. It's been a little while since uh, we've uploaded, but again, sports news has been dry, just running down the playoffs, had lots of playoff races, very entertaining baseball. So uh, and this one, we're just going to be covering the wild card series. I'm going to be trying to get up a postseason prediction video out for you guys coming soon. But we're just going to cover the wild card series quickly. And we're going to start off with in the American League with the Blue Jays and Rays. So who do you got in that series? Well, I, I had the Rays, uh, you know, this year, my, my, one of my teams that was going to be, a, a, you know, a team to be reckoned with. Uh, I didn't think they were going to get past the Yankees, and I still don't think they're going to get past the Yankees when it ultimately comes down to it. But I do like them against the Blue Jays. But also, don't forget, one of my predictions was that the Blue Jays would be an improved uh, team this year, and they did not disappoint with their star-studded young lineup of Bichette, Vigio, and Guerrero, and a pitching staff that actually hung in there in a ballpark in Buffalo that was a AAA ballpark that – I mean, the ball just jumped out of, um, and they, they were able to get in. They, you know, they are the eight seed, so it's not going to be an easy task for them. Uh, the Rays are strong. They've got Blake Snell on the mound for game one. Um, I, I actually see the Rays sweeping this series 2-0. I don't see the Blue Jays getting a game. Uh, I think the Rays play probably the, their best in their home ballpark. They, they seem to be comfortable there even without fans. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Rays in this one, but the Blue Jays are going to be a force to be reckoned with uh, in the years to come. Yeah, for sure. And we see we have my Rays hat on right here. But again, I'm also going with the Rays here. I really like the Rays pitching. Again, I always say pitching wins ball games. We've, we, see, we saw it last year with the Nationals, and the Rays have an absolutely fantastic rotation. Blake Snell, Charlie Morton, you know, Yarbrough, Glasnow, you, these pitchers are really good. And for the Blue Jays, you have Ryu, who has been on the choking Dodgers team. You bring in Taiwan Walker, Robbie Ray, who has postseason experience. You have some guys in that staff that are good. But, again, I just don't think your offense will be able to match it and your uh, your offense will match Tampa Bay's pitching. And, you know, Tampa Bay, I think, will just dominate your offense. A bunch of youngsters getting their first – getting their feet wet in the postseason. I think this year's perfect for the Blue Jays. If you're Blue Jays, I know your season will probably end after this series. But I am so stoked to be watching this team. Again, a bunch of young stars, Bichette, Biggio, Guerrero, getting their feet deep in the playoffs, that atmosphere. It'll be fun to watch that team in a couple of years. Moving on to the Indians and Yankees. What are you feeling on this series? This is an interesting series. It's, uh, it's not what I expected. I did not expect the Yankees to be on the road in, in this round. Uh, this is, this goes, brings me back to a few years ago when the Yankees and Indians, uh, they matched up, and the Yankees were actually the underdog in that series. The, Yan the Indians coming off of a World Series berth in 2016. Um, you know, I like the Yankees. I think they have the team that can get them to the World Series. I think they have the offense. I think they're coming together. Stanton, um, Stanton and Aaron Judge are back. I think they've got depth. I think they've got enough pitching. 
I don't think the Indians are going to be able to handle their offense. I do think the Indians will get a game. I think it comes down to a game three. And the Yankees win in a slugfest, 10-9 to nine in game three. The Yankees advance to the divisional series. Yeah, so for this one, I am actually, as much as it pains me to do it, because I dislike both these teams, I actually think Cleveland has a slight ever edge over New York. Again, I'm not a very strong, you know, person on the Yankees. You know, Garrett Cole, he's been dominant, but this year he's given up a lot of home runs. You have a predominantly lefty, lefty heavy lineup out there. Jose Ramirez has been tearing the baseball off the cover. We saw what Lindor did to the Yankees in that game five in the ALDS back a couple years ago in 2017 it was. So, I again, I think the Indians are going to keep pushing forward. Uh, Bieber in game one, presumably. Again, I don't think you're going to get – a you know, Bieber is just dominant. Probably the best pitcher this year in baseball. And, you know, he – Won the he, triple crown. Of triple pitching. crown. Pitching triple crown. Exactly. So, you know, he's going to be fun to watch. And then also you have Zach Plesak, the youngster, going out, I presume, also in game two. And then the Yankees really after Garrett Cole. I mean, do you throw Davey Garcia? I mean, he pitched Sunday. So, but again, the Yankees don't have, you know, enough pitching besides Garrett Cole starting wise. That And I think the Indians with more, you know, postseason experience than the Yankees have. I mean, the Yankees have gone deep, but they have more of the veteran guys compared to the youngsters and Judge and, you know, out here, Judge, Glaber, who's been injured a lot. So, I, overall, I think the Indians are probably going to take this series. It'd be really close again. Game three, slugfest probably. So, it's just a matter of can bullpens hold. But, overall, it's be a very close season. I see the Indians coming out on top. Moving on to the next series, we have the Minnesota Twins and the Houston Cheaters. Who you got? I've got, I've got the Twinkies in this one. I think, you know, the Astros are on borrowed time. I've been saying it all year. Uh, they were lucky to honestly get in, get it together because really the AL wasn't as strong top to bottom as I thought it would be this year. Uh, and we knew that. We knew the AL Central had had a few teams that were, were duds when you talk about uh, Kansas City and Detroit. Uh, and, you know, the Mariners were the Mariners and the Angels were the Angels, you know, as uh, Mike Singletary said, or I'm sorry, Dennis Green said years ago, we are who they thought they were. Uh, go back and look that one up, kids. Uh, the, the, the Astros are on borrowed time. They, they do not have the pitching depth. You know, I know Grinky's starting game one, but, you know, no, Mr. No-No Maeda, or almost No-No Maeda, is starting for the Twins in game one. The Twins are just solid. They, they just they catch the ball, they hit the ball, they pitch the ball. They're just, they just play the game the way it's supposed to be played. They've got some. They've got a lot of pop in their lineup, when, especially when you talk about Miguel Sano. That guy can really hit the cover off the ball. I don't think the Astros get a game in this series. I think it's it's a clean sweep uh, for the Twinkies, uh, two zero. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on this. I have the Twins moving on here. The Twins again, Kenta Maeda. He's re really hard to get past again. Granky has shown lights of promise, but you no know, age, veteran experience. Maybe maybe the Astros are, Astros are able to sneak one game past. Besides that, McCullers, again, he's also been a good player. I mean, the Astros have this experience. Their team, their roster hasn't been shaped much from what it was in 2017, 2018, 2019, where, you know, they made these runs into deep into the playoffs. But, again, this young Twins team, I think they're eager to move on past the first round. They got absolutely destroyed last year by the Yankees. I think they're eager. I think, you know, bringing in a player like Donaldson, that veteran president that, that has been in the playoffs multiple times before, I think he's really going to help, you know, be that leadership in the playoffs and say, hey, you know, th this is what this is. This is your experience. And then Maeda also with the Dodgers. So I think overall this will be another good series. But, again, I think the Twins probably uh, are going to win this series. Moving on to another pretty good series with the A's and White Sox. You know, a couple of younger teams. Who you got coming out on top? So you see my background today, I'm not one of those, uh, you know, Bay Area fans or Giants fans that doesn't respect the A's. I love the A's. I, I want, I am rooting for the A's, uh, you know, and, and in fact, you know, I think they can get to the World Series. Now, I, earlier in the year, I picked them to the ALCS, and I still think that's probably their ceiling, but I'm, I am hoping that they get to the World Series. Losing Matt Chapman did not help, but you bring in Jake Lamb, who's not a bad uh, backup. But I have to say, oh, man, did they get a tough draw in this one. Whew. 
because of the way the playoffs were uh, constructed this year and the White Sox actually were, they, they, they could have been as high as a three or, or two or a three seed. They end up going all the way down to a seven seed. And now they are going to play the A's in a series that is very dangerous for Oakland because of Giolito and Keuchel and because of that, the, the absolute crushers they have in their lineup. They, you know, the, the Cuban sensations along with Jose Abreu these guys can really hit the ball. They've got a lot of confidence. You know, you look at a guy like Tim Anderson and the type of uh, energy he brings to the team and his confidence level. They're going to be a tough out. Um, the A's historically have not fared well in these short series. Uh, in fact, they've only gotten past the, the first round one time. Uh, and that was 2007. They were able to get to the, uh, I'm sorry, 2006, they were able to get to the ALCS. They faced off against the Tigers. Maglia Ordonez hits a home run in the bottom of the ninth inning in game four to take the Tigers to the World Series, where they would ultimately lose to the Cardinals in five. That's the last time the A's have made it to the ALCS. And they have not fared well in wildcard games. They've not fared well in, in five-game series. However, they are going to win this series. The reason why, they have the offense to do it. They finally have the team. I think they have the depth, and they've got Jesus Lizardo, who's going to go in game one. His stuff is electric. I think, you know, he's, he's, the moment's not too big for him. I've seen him pitch enough this year where I think he's going to be able to come through. Uh, it's better than a one-game playoff, one-game series, so at least they have – if they do lose game one because of nerves, at least they, they can come back. Uh, I, think, I think the White Sox do get game one. I think the A's come back and get game two, and then they win a barn burner in game three. The A's advance. Yeah, so I'm going to go with the White Sox here. I mean, it pains me to do it. As much as I want to see the A's move on, <laughs> I see your reaction here. No. I know, but – for me, like you said, Giolito, you know, he's he's almost been through the postseason-like field. He pitched a no-hitter. It's almost fair to say that the White Sox probably have it. As much as I want the A's to win, you know, they're the local team here. They're the team, you know, I want to go out and watch. I want them to come back, you know, at the end of the year, you know, with the ring, you know, with the parade. You know, say, hey, you know, I was here when this happened. But ultimately, when I look at the rosters up and down, losing Matt Chapman is a big hit to this team. I know the A's, like you said, Jake Lamb, and overall top to bottom, they are a strong offensive team. But I'm looking at the White Sox and looking, wow, this team has amazing, amazing starting rotation. You know, Dallas Keuchel, he is an, uh, he, he was a sneaky, sneaky pick, pick up this offseason in free agency. Giolito, you know, those two starting it out. And then, you know, game three still up in the air, pitching. They have some, you know, young, solid arms. But when you get to that bullpen for, for, for the White Sox, like Garrett Crochet, I mean, I don't know if you've seen him, him pitch. It's nasty. I mean, the back end of that White Sox bullpen is nasty. Lazardo, you know, facing teams above 500 this year hasn't looked the greatest. You know, I acquired him on fantasy. You know, he had a good start and then bad, bad medium starts against teams at 500 or above. So overall, Lazardo, again, I'm not looking for good fit. Frankie Montas, I don't know. He pitched Sunday. I don't know if you use him out of the pen potentially. But overall, I think the pitching, was, that's what wins games. I think the pitching is going to dominate the A's offense. As much as I'm, I'm rooting for the A's, I just don't think they're going to get past the White Sox. White Sox moving on. On to the National League, starting off with our least favorite teams, the Los Angeles Dodgers facing the Milwaukee Brewers. Who you got? <sighs> I still believe the Dodgers are going to win the World Series. I'm not going to change my pick. They will continue to be an asterisk <laughs> moving into the future, but they are so good. They are just dominant, and they caught a huge break. I, I, I truly believe that the Giants would, would have been a tougher out for them the Brewers just, to me, they just don't have the pitching. I mean, it's TBD for um, Wednesday night, you know, against Walker Bueller in game one. And then, you know, Clayton Kershaw in game two. I, I just, I honestly don't think the Brewers have a chance in hell in this series. As much as I would love to see them upset them, I mean, I'd be thrilled. I don't care about my prediction. 
But the Dodgers are going to sweep this series, and it's not going to be close. Yeah, so I'm going to again go with the Dodgers here. But, again, if the Brewers do get Woodruff in uh, potentially game two, he pitched Saturday, I believe, and he pitched amazing against St. Louis. Eight shutout innings, I believe 13 Ks. I mean, Woodruff is nasty. Again, another sneaky pickup on fantasy for you guys looking out for next year. But, again, Woodruff, I think, you know, he, you, he's been dominant. He shut down the Reds pretty well, two runs and five and two-thirds innings pitched. Um, the, the, I think if Woodruff comes out here, the Brewers have a chance. It's just a matter can Woodruff come out game two on Thursday. I believe he would be ready for that, four days it would rest. Be four days, it would be four days rest. Yep, so I think Tuesday, they have a shot Tuesday against the infamous, infamous Clayton Chokeshaw. So, again, if the Brewers can make it to that game three, they have a shot. Overall, game one, I'm not looking like it's going to be anything good for the Brewers. They just don't have any pitching besides Woodruff. So, moving, getting rid of Zach Davies really hurt them this offseason. Overall, Dodgers advancing, as much as it pains me to do it. Next up, we have one of these surprising, surprising teams uh, this, this offseason going up with the San, the San Diego Padres going up against the St. Louis Cardinals. Who you got here? <sighs> I liked the Padres. I really did. And I, I thought they were set up. But now, you know, Clevenger's out. Is, is he going to be ready? Uh, they... They've got some injury issues. They've, they've got, you know, a few – they're dinged up in their rotation. Their bullpen, to me, you know, was supposed to be a bright spot for them. It just – it didn't – to me, it didn't come together. I have to say, I really – I really believe the Cardinals are going to win this series. I, I do think it'll go three. So, I think it'll be a game three. Traditionally, the Padres, they just don't show up in these big games. Now, they haven't been in a lot of them in the last decade, but still – you know, the Cardinals have the experience. They, they have, you know, they have enough experience that has been there that I think will, will come up in, the, in this type of a situation. I, I think it's going to go three. But I, unfortunately for San Diego, I do think the Cardinals are going to squeak this one out. I think it's going to be one of those series where every game is close. Uh, I think they're going to be low-scoring games. Uh, because San Diego, even with the changes they've made to the fences there, it's still a hard place to hit. But uh, I, think the, I think the Cardinals are going to get this series. I really do. And I think it's going to be close. Uh, I'm hoping for San Diego. I'd like to see them win, but I, I don't see it. I see the Cardinals winning this series. San Diego, I'm putting you in the same exact boat I put the Blue Jays. You know, I really like the team. I think this team is going to be amazing in the next couple of years. I mean, potentially the next Los Angeles Dodgers, the next powerhouse team, you know, bringing in Machado, look how good he's been. But again, I think getting your feet wet with a bunch of youngsters, you know, in this, you know, uh, in, in the playoffs, uh, losing Clevenger hurts a lot. Lament, you know, is he going to be able to come out there for the playoffs? Zach Davies. You know, I mean, they have a, a solid handful of players with uh, postseason experience. You know, they had to make a pivot to get Trevor Rosenthal and other bullpen arms. That think, helps. Yeah, that helps a lot. But, you know, it, it's just a matter of can you guys, you know, stack up well. Personally, the Cardinals, they are looking for revenge after getting swept by the Nationals last year. Overall, looking at this, you know, from this angle, I'm just – I'm thinking Cardinals, you know, probably in three games here. I, re I like what San Diego has, but this year, no, probably not. Again, let with the Blue Jays, next year, looking really bright. Moving on to the Cubs and Marlins. Wow, the Marlins play the playoffs. <laughs> and the Marlins have never lost a postseason series. So if the Marlins win the World Series, I'm just going to sit here and laugh. Who you got? Oh, man. I, you know, I, I can't say that I would be surprised if the Marlins somehow got to the World Series and won it because – They've never lost a playoff series in their existence, which is unbelievable. And again, I could sit here all day and talk about how they beat the Giants in both of those years and how pathetic that was um, at the time. Kids, go back and look up. Jose Cruz Jr. dropped a fly ball uh, in game, game three of that series. Ugh. Um, but th it's not going to happen this year. <laughs> it's just not. The, the Cubs are at home. Uh, I, I think – you know, I think the Marlins are going to be a little overwhelmed. I mean, they, they've got their young pitching studs, you know, uh, 
And I, I just, the problem is, I just don't think they're quite ready for, for this type of a moment for these high leverage situations. Uh, playing at Wrigley Field, this is not this is not the 2003 Marlins that had veteran presence. They had, you know, uh, guys like Luis Castillo and Juan Pereira and Jeff Conine, and, and they had you know a really solid rotation with Josh Beckett. Now you could make the comparisons and say that their young pitching is is that, but I don't think they're. I think they're still a few years away. Uh, now. The Cubs, they're, they're not a dominant team. But I still think that they have enough, and I said this at the beginning of the year, they have enough experience to be able to get through those high leverage uh, innings that you need. Chris Bryant starting to get hot at the end of the year. Uh, I like the Cubs. I like the Cubs in too. I, I think they're going to they're gonna take this series fairly quickly. Wouldn't it be a year if the Miami Marlins won the World Series? I mean, can you imagine the headlines of that? But again, Cubs veteran presence, you guys have what? Anyone on that team with playoff experience? Maybe Brandon Kinsler, like Aguilar maybe. But Aguilar last year with the Nationals. But otherwise, I don't see anyone with postseason experience on that team really. So youngsters in the playoffs against a veteran team, Wrigley, you're going to have nerves. Everything is going to go crazy. Everything's going to go haywire. We saw it towards the end of the year with the Marlins. Not looking too – hey, they beat the Yankees a couple of times. But uh, not looking too good for the Mar Marlins. I'm rooting you on, Marlins. I want to be able to sit back as a Mets fan, just laugh at you guys, and say, what the heck happened this year? But Cubs are winning this series, as much as I hate to say it. And finally, the last series of this video, we have the Atlanta Braves facing off against the Cincinnati Reds. Who you got? You know, this one, underrated, might be the best series uh, of them all. Um, honestly, it's, it's that good. Uh, so, you know, the Reds are smoking hot. They've got, they've got what it takes to win a series like this, especially with Trevor Bauer going in game one. Uh, however... Atlanta is just so star-studded. I mean, they are just – Ronald Acuna Jr., this guy, he just absolutely pulverized the baseball over the weekend. I mean, it was like you, you cannot hit a ball any further. It's just unbelievable what he's been able to do. And Freddie Freeman, you know, MVP candidate, they are loaded. Um, they may not have the pitching – to get to the World Series, but I do think that they also like the A's, and I mentioned this earlier in the year, I think they are going to get over the hump. They've had trouble in these short series also. I think they're gonna get over the hump in this shorter series. The Reds, just not enough. I think it's gonna go three games. I think the Reds also, like the White Sox, I think they will win game one, because I think they're coming in hot, but then the Braves are gonna cool them off, and then it's gonna be a, a close game in a game three. Again, it matters to be at home. It matters to have that last at bat. That's another thing that we're forgetting to mention is that having the last at bat is really important. So uh, I'm going to give the nod to the Braves, but I think this is going to be a really good series. We saved the best for last. And best is going to be the Cincinnati Buds here. The Braves, I'm not liking their pitching. I mean, how are you supposed to go out beat – three Cy Young candidates. You got Trevor Bauer. You got Luis Castillo. You got Sonny Gray. I mean, it's... Marcelo Suna, Ozzy Albies, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., Freddie Freeman, Nick Markakis. I mean, this team's loaded. This Braves team is loaded. And, you know, I like this Braves team. As a Mets fan, it hates me to say it. This Braves team has a shot this year. But looking at it, the, the, the Reds, I think their hitting will be able – coming out hot, you know, I think their hitting will be able to top the Braves pitching. The Braves pitching, it started off so hot. If the Braves pitching started where it's at now, not so good, and then both bolted up to the way they were pitching at the beginning of the year, the Braves in my eyes are World Series winners. But the fact that the Braves pitching has slowed down a lot, injuries hurt him a lot, losing Soroka. I mean, Max Freed has not looked as sharp. Again, more injuries for Freed. You know, overall, they have youngsters in there. You got Ian Anderson, Kyle Wright, Cole Hamels is done. So, I mean, I'm looking at this Braves pitching like, 
who you got here? You know, are we going to go with rookies out there pitching the postseason against these veteran dominant Cy Young candidates? I'm not liking it. I, I think these games probably going to have a lot, a lot of offense once you get to the Reds' bullpen. So I think the Reds, going into the later innings, 7, 8, and 9, the Reds will be winning. Watch the Braves' offense come back. These ga three games, the most entertaining three games, I think, of the entire postseason. So overall, let me know what y'all think. Comment section below. Did I make some terrible picks picking the the White Sox over the A's and the and the Reds over the Braves? I've been saying the Reds. <laughs> I've been saying the Reds are going to win the series, and I think the Reds have a solid shot. I mean, they're hot. You yeah, know, you also thought the Mets would make the playoffs. Hey, I mean, you also thought the Mets would make the playoffs too. So go back and watch it. Overall, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you next week. Hopefully, we'll be talking about the NLDS in the traditional playoff format. And otherwise, see you then. Peace out.